lots of times you have summer squash, but you don't have the summer squash that the recipe calls for, and that's okay, because anytime you have summer squash, you can substitute it for any other recipe that also calls for summer squash. So I've got a variety here that you may have come across, and then we're gonna make a stuffed summer squash uh, with one or more varieties that we have. This one is a patty pan squash, uh, and it, it's a really, really nice one, very flavorful, very delicate in flavor. Uh, this uh, one beside it is actually a, a cross. It's called a zephyr, and it's a cross between a delicata and a yellow squash. This is the traditional crook neck yellow squash, straight neck yellow squash. Uh, this one is a magda, and it's a Lebanese zucchini. This is another variety of zucchini, and this is the more traditional variety. And any of the, the squash that you see here can be used in any of the squash recipes. The trick is, is when you're stuffing them is you want to kind of get some that are going to be comparable in size. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to start with uh, this one, which is similar to those I've already prepared here. Uh, you wash it, of course, because they grow on the ground. There's going to be a little bit of grit, no matter how many people told you they washed it before. There have been hands on it as well. So you want to secure, securely hold it here. It's a little bit more difficult than some things to slice because it tends to roll. Slice it through and then we want to take this center out but we want to save it. Now, my technique for doing this and there are many is to use a grapefruit spoon and you can dig that in the seedy section here and just twist and that'll come out. You want to have around a fourth of an inch uh, of uh, shell left on there. If it's a little more that's fine but you just go through that and then you coarsely chop uh, what you have here as, as far as uh, uh, the uh, filling or the, the meat of the squash that you've taken out. I will tell you that when you get up to this end where there aren't any more seeds, you may need to be a little bit more carefully, careful, particularly if you put it in the refrigerator because it's more apt to crack on you and I have evidence of that in my refrigerator now. Uh, I'm saving those for another use, but they don't work anymore for uh, stuffing quite as well. Although I did use the uh, center of them that I pulled out. So now this one you could see that you could, could carve all the way up and get it out as an actual boat. You can do the same thing with something like a crook neck squash. Uh, but in that case, you'd simply slice it the long way, but you'd only hollow out the very end of the bulb, and that's the part that you would stuff. Looks really cool on a plate. You get this stuffing right here and this long uh, curl coming out the top. So uh, any of them can be used. Now, as I said, I've already got some of this ready to go, so uh, we're going to uh, pass on chopping that one up at, at the moment. Just needs to be a real coarse chop. You don't have to do it fine at all. Um, because it's going to soften up and, and mellow out when it's uh, actually cooking anyway. So this is going to go in our skillet. Uh, that was, oops, I've got what I have covered up here. Uh, that was two tablespoons of canola oil. You could use olive oil, peanut oil, whichever one you happen to have. And also about a tablespoon of unsalted butter. Now we're going to try and keep the salt down in the butter because we have other ingredients that you might not think of as having a fair amount of salt that actually do. And one of those is going to be our breadcrumbs that we're going to use kind of as a base to hold everything together. Uh, and bread actually has a, a fairly high salt content compared to some other things, particularly since we tend to eat a fair amount of it every day. So uh, you're going to want to not add salt in extreme, so you're going to kind of keep control of it. We are going to keep control of it, however, by adding a little bit to our boats here. So I've got about an eighth of a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of that into the squash itself. And then about a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper will go in there also. And that will do a little bit to uh, flavor the, the meat of the squash underneath everything else. There we go. And I've lined the sheet with parchment paper. Sometimes squash can have a lot of liquid in it. And so we're uh, taking care not to uh, get too much as a result of that. And then our little bit of peppers going in here. And the parchment paper is going to catch all of that that's blowing in the nice breeze that we've got going on. A little bit more on that one. Hopefully that person likes a lot of pepper. All right. What I have next to do is we've got a cup of onion that I've chopped. Now remember these are almost recommendations as opposed to requirements as far as ingredients are going. So when the butter is melted or pretty much melted, then you can go ahead and add the onion. And also with, with the onion, we're going to add this squash that we've chopped. And remember, it just has to be a coarse chop. We're going to let that stir it in and then we're going to let it saute for about five minutes.
you can see that the squash has softened up and we're still not done cooking it at all yet so we've got a little bit more time. I'm going to add another uh, fourth to a teaspoon of salt or so and another fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper. Stir that around a little bit. I've got a tablespoon or teaspoon of dried thyme or a tablespoon of fresh thyme if you have that and then a third of a cup of artichoke hearts. Now this recipe has more ingredients that we usually use uh, and you can fiddle with the ingredients that go in your stuffing. If you have one that you already like fairly well, that's fine. Uh, the last thing I'm going to put in is a lot of garlic. This one's got three tablespoons or three cloves of garlic and they were fairly large cloves so it's going to have a pronounced flavor. So if you don't want that much garlic flavor, uh, feel free to cut back on that just a little bit. Um, but it, it really gives a nice, a nice flavor to it. This needs to cook about 30 seconds. We want it to cook long enough to start softening up the garlic. This is going to go into the uh, stuffing mix with the dried breadcrumbs uh, and go into the oven inside the zucchini for 45 minutes. So uh, there's going to be continued cooking even though you won't see that all here. Next ingredient is, let me see, five excuse me, three tablespoons of vermouth. Now if you have white wine, you can use white wine as well. The advantage to vermouth is that if you don't drink a lot of white wine, once you open it, then you pretty much lose the bottle. With vermouth, it's shelf stable so that you can uh, keep it on hand without worrying that it's gonna go bad on you. So it gives a very similar uh, flavor profile and uh, if you're somebody like me that doesn't drink the wine all that often, it works really well to have something that I can keep on hand. This is just going to cook long enough to evaporate the liquid most of the way. So it won't take very long, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. It kind of depends on your range. Also it's going to depend a little bit on the weather on how quickly things are going to be able to get absorbed. That looks pretty much like it's about done. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. At this point, we have just a couple of more steps. I have three slices of whole grain bread. Now this is fresh bread, not dried bread, but you could use dried breadcrumbs as well. Day old bread works really well. You uh, put them in the blender one at a time and they are going to uh, turn into crumbs for you so that you, it saves you from uh, buying uh, bread. You could also do it in a food processor. So stir those together a little bit. We'll get a little bit of moisture. We don't want a lot of moisture because we don't want the breadcrumbs actually becoming soggy here couple of more ingredients. We've got a fourth of a, a cup of chopped up parsley. Notice I didn't bother to chop it up really, really finely. About two tablespoons of chopped basil. Two teaspoons of lemon zest. And then a third of a cup of toasted uh, pine nuts. And you put those in a skillet or in the oven and, and stay with them very closely because as soon as you start to smell the aroma from them, uh, they're going to be done. They'll go, go burn really, really fast if you're not real careful. Last ingredient I have is five tablespoons of grated or shredded Parmesan cheese. And you want to add that closer to the end when you've added some of those other ingredients already because it's going to start to melt on you because the uh, hot ingredients that you've got in here are going to uh, start to melt it a little bit. Now the recipe says you're going to put a half a cup of this uh, filling inside each of your uh, squash boats here. It's going to depend totally on how big your squash boats are. And if you have more filling than you have squash boats, that's not an issue. This filling can be used in other things as well. So uh, it works really, really nicely. So you're just going to spoon, spoon that in. I use a measuring cup to try and get uh, a little bit more control although obviously I need a little bit more here. Uh, and then you can kind of press it in a little bit, but don't press it in too far. You want to have it uh, able to expand a little bit to dry out and get a little bit crunchy in there too. So you'd finish with the rest of them. Again, it goes in a 375 degree oven for 45 minutes or just until you can insert a knife or a fork into the meat of party part, meaty part of the squash uh, and have it go in and, and find out it's tender. And once that comes out, you have uh, summer stuff, summer squash. It's, it's great either right when it comes out of the oven. I also like it uh, when it uh, chills down and makes a great lunch the next day. I hope you'll give it a try. For Oklahoma Gardening, I'm Barbara Brown. Mm -hmm.